Hey guys, Henning and Morden from Flip Normals here. And in today's first of a kind video, I think, uh, we are taking a look at some of the hard surface features inside of ZBrush. We wanted to do a little, we wanted to compile a little list of the sort of like top five coolest features when doing hard surface in ZBrush for you guys. Something that can help speed up your workflow and some things that are just kind of cool in ZBrush and also a little weird that it exists in ZBrush, but you know, whatever, it's ZBrush. And hopefully this is the first of many hard service videos. Yeah, in ZBrush. so the first one is uh, the QCube or QSphere and QGrid. These can be found if you select your star poly mesh and you just simply hit QCube. This will just make a perfect cube that's subdivided uh, based on these parameters down here. You can also say QCube 7 and it does this to it. So it's a really quick way to just have perfectly subdivided cubes that are easy to then sort of manipulate afterwards. You can only find these under the star. Yeah. And uh, you know, you have a cube 3D, so like, why would you want to do this? Well, if you look at the wireframe of the cube 3D, it is bootleg as hell. It's basically a sphere <laughs> <laughs> in the shape of a cube. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, you can't really use this. I never thought about that. It's so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you try to use it for anything and you know, you can't. Yeah. But uh, this one actually has proper, you know, cube topology. Not that that should be that hard, but. Uh, so it this does. is a really good starting point um, if you just want to play around with cubes or with spheres. The nice thing about the cube sphere is that it's actually cubed. Mm. Um, unlike there is another way to get a cube sphere, a cubed sphere in ZBrush, but I, this is now the easiest way I feel. So this is a really cool option that you can just play around with and have some really quick primitives. Yeah. Remember, only under the star. Yeah. <laughs> another really cool feature is, which seems weird, is the dynamic subdivision. And dynamic subdivision is something I've often sort of overlooked as an annoying feature, um, mostly when you're doing organic stuff, but for hard surfaces it's actually really, really useful. So you activate dynamic subdivision just by hitting D. You'll get a pop-up the first time you do this, every time you open ZBrush, where you can just say yes to always or yes or no for this session. So standard dynamic subdivision, this is what we all know and don't love, I think. But what you do have, so I, I've made this little bootleg menu down here, which is super confusing, I guess. But uh, still a bit work in progress. Yeah, it's very work in progress right now. So you have the Q grid, and the Q grid basically does magic. So ta da! There you go. Then you have a nicely subdivide. It's kind of like how you would expect the cube to subdivide if you had put in like um, put in some more supporting edges. But then you just play around with the parameters of this. So the cool thing is. The cube grid and coverage sort of work together to sort of like get the look of the cube or the subdivision that you want. Right now, I only have bevel activated. If I disable that and hit chamfer, then we get a super nicely rounded corner. You can do these in conjunction and it's just that's a little tighter. And then you just sort of like play around with the cube grid and the coverage to get the, the look for the perfect cube that you want. This is super nice as uh, so you don't actually have to subdivide your model in order to control control this with regular subdivision, you would have to add supporting edges, yeah. or maybe you'd have to do creasing and whatnot. But this is just a nice little substitute for that. And you can always hit Shift D and go out of dynamic subdivision again, yeah. go back into it. So if you're running into performance issues, always you know just hit Shift D and you're good to go again. Another really cool thing uh, is when it comes to booleans. So I've loaded up the insert mesh booleans brush here. And this cube right now, you know, has the dynamic subdivisions on. So what you can do is you can simply like, you can simply drag out any of these meshes. Let's drag out this oval here. And this now inherits the, the values of the dynamic subdivision. So this gets dynamically subdivided as well. So you don't have to go in per object. So this is now all contained within this object. And it just sort of does that. Um, I have a little menu here for splitting unmasked points. Actually, not something I really wanted to talk about, but it just sort of like unmasked. It splits whatever is unmasked. So with this selected now, I'm going to show you something really cool. Let's turn off dynamic because we just, don't really just need shift it. Just shift Yeah, shift to turn that off. And we just have this object now. So if you hold down alt and click the little go to unmasked center, it just sort of goes to the center of the object. That is just a little Google Maps icon. <laughs> yeah. You hold down alt, hit the little rotation key. And then our gizmo is sort of reset back to normal. So let's just scale this down a little bit, move it in, 
and then we will activate live boolean. So live boolean should be in your default menu up here. I've just moved it down here because this is a, like I said, the work in progress, hard surface UI that I'm working on. So it's all over the place right now. Let's turn this into subtractive. You have additive, subtractive and intersection. These are this, these little weird things next to the name of the subtool, which you have never known what they are. <laughs> yeah, they were basically. for booleans. <laughs> next to the I one there, you, you, you've been accidentally click, clicking them, nothing has ever happened. Exactly. You're like, I guess they don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah, they're for booleans. <laughs> <laughs> I thought like one of them was like, I think you can use one of them for rendering transparency at one point, like when Super huh. 4 first came out. But there was something like that, I think. Well, don't worry, no. Um, a really cool thing, so now when we're moving this around, you know, just... All dynamic, super cool. but let's say we wanted to have multiple of these and you wanted to space them out in an even way. Now, one way you can do this is by hitting the little sticky mode thing here and then hold down control, move it out. And now it's out one, like it's sort of one unit or whatever. Then you hit one, which is uh, repeat active or repeat last stroke or something like that. Yeah, just the one on the keyboard. Yeah. No, no, no interface. Just thing. the normal one key. And then you have these perfectly spaced out all the same. And then you can move them around and, you know, have fun with them. An easier way to do this is with array mesh. So and this just the other method just with the sticky mode enabled just it's more of a committal one. So you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure I want to move these out now. The other way is with a ray mesh. So with a ray mesh activated, all you have to do, let's see, uh, we want to move it in the Y direction. So let's do that. And then repeat like four times. And then you can like just offset it like this. Really handy because this way, what we can also do is just we can go in with dynamic subdivision activated and all of these are now active. But if you then decide, well, I only want one, you can just turn off a ray mesh again. So it's a really quick way to sort of concept uh, when doing hard surface in ZBrush. And yeah, I've, I found this really, really useful actually. So what we can then move on to is um, one of the features that they added, oh, when was that? Two versions ago, three versions ago? I don't know, like yeah. ZBrush updates are so irregular that you never really know. Yeah, um, sometimes they have like three in two months and then they have, like they had some years ago where there was quite often and then now there's like two years between each version <laughs> yeah exactly so in whatever version that came out i think maybe it was r8 they introduced this little start thing up here which i think some people have been using for grouping you're sort of like you can collapse them so auto collapse and then it collapse into the group so that's a, just a nice way to organize your uh, your your z tools if you have like a lot of z tools uh, or sub tools in here it can be quite hard to figure out um, where does where does one start and where does one end, you know? But with this enable, what this actually does, it also impacts the um, order of operations when, when it comes to Booleans. So right now, if we have live Booleans turned on and we have this cylinder, you can see this just goes in, let's just do a slight one there. So it just intersects with this. Now, if we were to duplicate this again and subtract it. Just control D for duplicate. Yeah. Um, or shift control D. Shift control D. Now, now this affects both of these, right? And you might not want that, even though like, let's say it's it's moved all the way in to, to the other cylinder, but you don't actually want it to affect the cube. What you can do is simply hit the start key here. And now it'll only affect whatever comes below this, or it'll like, this will be like the parent and anything that comes below this will only affect the parent now. So that sort of leaves the start cube here alone. And that means that we can just move our original cylinder in, do what we want with that. And then we have this additional cylinder, which now only affects the second cylinder under the start. So it's just a really handy way to organize your booleans, I guess, because these can get quite complicated if you don't commit for a long time and you just sort of like play around. So definitely have a, have a, have a look at the start, um, sort of like order of operations option. To, to speed up your Boolean workflow. Yeah, it can be used for grouping or it can just be used for Booleans. Yeah. Very handy stuff. Now, the last thing I just want to show you is, let's see here, we made this wonderful object oh, with- Oh, this uh, is super cool. With QMesh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for some, some of these things, I actually like to use the mouse just because it's more accurate. Um, but if you go into the 
B, Z, and M, the Z modeler. Uh, there's, you know, there's like a plethora of options here and where do you even start? But what I wanted to show you today, what we want to show you today is the bevel option. So if you go in and you just uh, bevel, bevel something like this, for example, it has like a, this, th this amount of bevel, let's say this was the perfect amount of, of bevel and you want to do it again, it's quite hard to like do it at the same time. You could do this with some poly groups or something to have it mirrored over, but if it's like spread all over your model, but you want to make sure that you apply the same level of or like the same amount of bevel to every edge. You can just drag it out and then without doing anything else, you just click on the second edge. Now this way, click on this edge, this way it preserves the amount so you have exactly the same bevel all the way around. This is why using a mouse is also a bit nicer because then you make sure it's a click and not a drag. Yeah, exactly. So these are all weird because if you wanted to, you could assign polygroups to these and it would bevel around this. But yeah, it's just really to show of the power of the bevel click, I call it. It's not really advanced. It's just like one of those like small hidden features within ZBrush, I think. Yeah, it's one of these which speeds up your work in over enough time. Yeah. <laughs> Makes everything just a bit more comfortable. So I think that about wraps it up. That was probably like six tips, but uh, it was like five and a half because we mm. skipped over one semi tip so but i hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more hard surface videos from us in the future make sure to like comment and subscribe yeah and let us know what hard surface things you want to see as well mm. and we might do some <laughs> maybe <laughs>